Hi there, today's story is from the book Johnny Gold Folk Tales by Joe Brennan and it's called The Glenty's Midwife. So, there was an old widow woman who lived a short distance from the village of Glenty's. She went about her business with a heavy heart and a bend on her back that told of great sadness. The weight that she carried on her shoulders was grief. When her only daughter was on the cusp of womanhood, she suddenly died. Her loss broke the woman's heart. She tried to put a brave face on her loss, but tears were never far from her eyes when she pictured her beautiful daughter. One day, as she was leaving the village on a fair day, she was accosted by a man she didn't recognise. "'Excuse me, ma'am, but my young wife is about to give birth to her first child and she needs assistance,' said the man. "'Oh, I'm not the woman for that,' she said. In her heart, she knew she couldn't bear to witness the joy of a birth. Please, the man said, the child will be here soon and my wife needs assistance. It's her first. Find someone else, she said. She turned away to hurry on her way, but the man gripped her arm. He wasn't hurting her, but there was a firmness in his grip that commanded her attention. She turned to face the stranger. Please, he said, there is no time. Swayed by his insistence, the old woman followed the man down a by road that she had never paid much attention to. They passed nobody on the road. In fact, there was a silence in the air that she had never experienced before. There wasn't even the sound of bird song. The road narrowed so that not even a cart could squeeze through, but there before her rose up a small cottage with a wisp of smoke rising into the air. The man opened the door, but the widow could see very little in the dim light of the cottage. When the door closed behind them, her eyes began to adjust, and she saw the young woman lying on a low bed near the fire. She walked towards her but stopped suddenly. She was about to cry out when the young woman put her finger to her lips and gave her a warning glare. Daughter, she whispered to herself. She had to put her hand out to the fireplace to steady herself. It was her daughter who was supposed to be dead. What was she doing here and why was she shooting her glares of warning? The widow walked nervously towards the bed. She wanted to throw her arms around her daughter but all she could do was grasp her hand. As the man busied himself at the fire, the widow's daughter pulled her mother close to explain. He's the fairy man and we're married, mother, she said. It was the fairies who took me away and left a changeling in my place. Oh, darling, said the woman. You mustn't let on that you know who I am. Just help me as if I'm a stranger, the daughter said. When the baby comes, he'll want to give you a reward for your help. You must refuse, but ask instead to take the boy home with you. He'll refuse, but if you beg earnestly, he will give him to you in the end. The mother attended her daughter, and thankfully everything went without a hitch. Once the baby had been washed, swaddled in a warm blanket and in his mother's arms, the widow said about tidying up. I must thank you for your kindness and for tending to my wife, the fairy man said. It is only right that I reward you with anything that you wish for. The widow did her best to act naturally. Oh, there is nothing in this world that I need, but I implore you to give that beautiful boy into my care and I will raise him to be a fine, strong man. I'm not going to give up my own son, he said. He'd be better off with me and you know that, she said. Of course, it is often the case that the fairies leave their own children to be reared by ordinary folk. The man looked at his wife, but she seemed totally distracted. Please, the woman said, I can give him everything that he needs. The fairy man relented and said she could take the boy with her, but mark my words, if I get wind that he's not been treated right, you'll regret the very day you met me, he said. The widow walked over to the bed to lift the boy out of his mother's arms. Her daughter's face was mingled with sadness and joy. As the widow lifted the child, the daughter slipped a magic ring into her hand and whispered, When it glows, you'll know we are about, and we can meet on the hill behind the house, she said. But if you ever see my husband, you must never acknowledge him or me. The old woman returned home with the red-haired boy, her grandson. Oh, that is a lovely healthy boy, her neighbour said the next day. He's the son of a niece of mine who lives down in Sligo. She's poorly after the birth and I offered to take care of him, she said. Well, he couldn't be in better hands, the neighbour said, and the child became accepted into the community. The widow kept the ring safely and whenever it glowed, she would take the child up onto the hill behind the house and spend time with her daughter. They treasured their time together and it brought them such joy. The widow had to be careful when she was in the town because there were times when she could see her daughter with her fairy husband. All the years of sadness were slowly lifting off the old woman's shoulders and she walked taller than she had in years. Mm -hmm. Then one day, with her heart full of joy, she met her daughter and her husband at the fair day in Glenty's. The red-haired boy was clinging to her arms and without thinking she said a big hello to them. 
How can you see me? The fairy man asked. There was fury burning in his eyes and before she could think of an explanation, the man blew on her eyes and she could no longer see the fairies. The precious ring also disappeared and she never saw her daughter again. Thank you. Bye bye.